News 46 is brought to you by... by Southwest Medical Associates. Look for news about their latest healthcare center opening soon in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates, now that's powerful medicine. News 46 is also brought to you by Red Apple Fireworks. You've never seen anything like it. Nevada's elite fireworks shopping experience, Red Apple Fireworks. Tonight on News 46, a child nearly drowns inside a pool on the north end of town. And there was a single vehicle rollover on the dirt road bypass to, Plag to Blag Road. And meet Miss Perump 2011 and her court. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and news across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Monday, June 27th, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Norma Jean Paddock, in for Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. Topping our news tonight, during a church function Saturday night, a nine-year-old girl came close to drowning at a private residence. Around 5 p.m. Saturday night, Nye County Sheriff's deputies and Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue were dispatched to a residence on Rhyolite on the north side of town for an alleged near drowning. Reportedly, a nine-year-old female had drowned inside the swimming pool at this location. A number of vehicles were at the residence in what appeared to have been a church gathering. Many occupants of the home were wearing swimsuits and towels and seemed to have been recently in the pool. According to the Nye County Sheriff's Department, the child did not know how to swim and fell into the pool while other individuals were also in the pool. CPR was reported to be in progress when emergency crews arrived on scene. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue attempted to stabilize the child before transport. Deputies escorted the ambulance to our local hospital where Mercy Air was on standby and airlifted the small child to UMC Trauma Center in Las Vegas. Additional deputies were dispatched back to the home to conduct the investigation. According to Nye County Sheriff's Captain Bill Becht, the accident report has been forwarded to the District Attorney's Office for their opinion in this case regarding possible charges. It does not appear that drugs or alcohol played any factor in this accident. Child Protective Services were alerted as well. The nine-year-old girl still remains at UMC Trauma Center in Las Vegas. Her condition is not known at this time. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue and Nye County Sheriff's deputies responded to a single vehicle rollover last night. Residents who live on the dirt portion of Lola Street told News 46 the vehicles traffic too fast down their road. Nye County Sheriff's deputies are investigating whether speed played a part in last night's accident involving a minivan. A single vehicle rollover last night on Atkinson and Lola. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue arrived on scene along with Nye County Sheriff's deputies. It appears that the vehicle rolled over one time on its side and that the occupants of the vehicle rolled the car back onto its tires. Nine County Sheriff's deputies are investigating the cause of this accident. Um, Miss Perump 2011 was crowned on Saturday night at Rosemary Clark School. The winner of this year's pageant has been a contestant in three previous pageants. We speak to our new queen, Rachel Moan. Well, on Saturday night here at Rosemary Clark Middle School, the 2011 Miss Perump pageant was held. We're going to speak to the queen, and that is Rachel Munn. Uh, fantastic. I can't stop screaming. <laughs> I don't know. I know. It, you just won. you just been crowned the 2011 Miss Perump. Tell me how you're feeling. Um, uh, that's the only way I can explain it. I don't know. Shocked ecstatic. and shaken. <laughs> yeah, ecstatic. How did the pageant go for you? How was it? Oh, it was a ton of fun. It was a good learning experience. I had a blast, met a lot of friends, had a lot of wonderful role models and leaders. Have you have you been in the pageant before in previous years? Yes, this is my third time being in the pageant. So tell me what that experience led you up to this. Well, it definitely prepared me for it. I knew what I was ex expecting um, for each category, I guess. It was 
a thrill to be in it every year, but yeah. Um, and about your platform? My platform is breast cancer awareness. My grandmother had breast cancer twice and she survived. And I just want to help promote and help with the fundraisers with breast cancer and just any forms of cancer. How old are you? 17. So tell me some of your previous, what's your hopes for the future and what's things that you're interested in? I love to dance and I hope to go to college next year to um, study dance, study design or photography. And some of your, those are your interests, is that what you would like to make for your career? Yes, I like artsy things and <laughs> just fun. But wonderful, congratulations. I know you have a great court too as well. Oh yes, I'm. it's a blast for me. My cousin is the first attendant and one of my best friends is the second attendant. So this is like so exciting for me. <laughs> and once again, we'd like to thank all the contestants here at the 2011 Miss Perump pageant, including the first runner-up and second runner-up of the pageant. What a wonderful court. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. All right, and coming up, we speak to the Miss Perump pageant runner-ups. And we get a tour of the new No to Abuse facility. We'll have all this and more right after the break. Please keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by... By Southwest Medical Associates. Look for news about their latest health care center opening soon in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. News 46 is also brought to you by Red Apple Fireworks. You've never seen anything like it. Nevada's elite fireworks shopping experience. Red Apple Fireworks. Welcome back to News 46. We caught up to first attendant of this year's pageant, Sarah Wolfenstein. Short I'm so excited. This was just so, so such a fun experience, and I was so happy I was allowed to be a part of it, and that I got first attendant. <laughs> you were really excited about that. Tell me a little bit about the pageant, how it went for you. Um, the pageant was just fabulous. The directors were great, all the girls. Um, I've become such good friends with them now. They're all fabulous. I wish all of them could have gotten a crown just because everyone was just so great and I'm just really happy. <laughs> you also won for the talent, didn't you? Yeah, I won the talent portion and photogenic, so I was happy. Tell me what you're going to be doing in the next year. Um, next year I'll be, you know, following Rachel around, doing fun attendant things with her. So. <laughs> What's your platform for the pageant? Oh, my platform was to prevent distracted driving. And you did a thing for the, um, the, pace, the, the pace program yeah. for that too as well. Uh, yeah, that um, being a part of that really opened my eyes of how um, distracted driving can affect. So I decided to choose that as my platform. And that's something that you really want to get out there because we've lost a lot of lives for that, haven't we? Yeah, it's just something that can be easily prevented. I feel like we, if we get the word out, it'll just try to have the problem just completely go away. Especially when you have a teen talking about it to other teens. Yeah, I think it's mostly effective to teenagers. So maybe if we go visit the high school here, then I think it'd be really effective. And then tell me what your hopes are for the future. Um, to graduate high school, um, I want to go off to college. I want to go to Dixie um, up in St. George, and I want to become an interior designer. Good, good luck and congratulations. Thank you so much. Second attendant, Tara Laramouth, spoke to News 46 about her race for the crown. It was a lot of fun, it was a lot of stress, but it turned out great and I was very happy that I participated in it. You looked really shocked on the second runner-up. How'd it feel? It feels wonderful. I, was, I wasn't in it to win anything, but it feels good too. <laughs> you seem to be very much involved in sports. I am. I play on the soccer team, the varsity soccer team at high school, and I'm on the dance team also. Tell me about some of your platform, what you'd like to do. My platform is homeless student awareness, and I would like to start maybe with collecting things for the homeless kids, 
and start there and work my way up and hopefully make a difference for them in our community. That's an issue people don't really talk about that much, do they? No, and that's what I want to do is push it forward and let people know about the problem that is in our community so we can help them. It's really true, and a lot of people, even students out there, don't have food. A lot of that is not told about because people are embarrassed to tell that they're homeless. Correct, and I think that's a lot of what I want to help with is collect things for them so they feel like they fit in. And tell me about your hopes for the future. I hope to go on to BYU for college and become a child psychologist and eventually get married. And now for our Facebook question of the day. Today's question is to fill in the blank. My favorite thing about Independence Day is... And Angela says, spending time with family and friends. Debbie says, family, freedom, food. I know that's three, but that's the freedom part. Momo says, seeing the excitement on my kids' faces when the fireworks start. Monica says, Pahrump fireworks, best I've ever seen, hands down, on the 4th. Look forward to the fireworks in the park every year. Mary says, knowing that all those years ago, dedicated men and women were ready and willing to fight for and die for something they so strongly believed in, independence. Regardless of party affiliations, we should remember and honor those sacrifices made then and also since then by many more. And Ian rounds it up with boom. That was great. <laughs> uh, Executive Director Clelia Garrity gives us a tour of the new No to Abuse facility on Blag, which caters to the, re the interview, investigation, and counsel of children and their families who have been victims of sexual abuse. The child advocacy centers, um, in the end, have to be accredited by an organization called the National Children's Alliance. And so in order to operate a child advocacy center, you have to meet 10 standards. And one of the standards is a child-focused setting. So you have to ensure that your rooms are appropriate for what you're doing with the children. They're culturally competent. They, they don't uh, impinge in any way. Uh, in, in terms of threatening the child or making the child anxious or unhappy. And this particular room that we're in right now is the interview room. We want it to be as calm as possible. We want the child to focus on the interview. We don't want her, him or her looking at uh, animals on the wall or whatever, being distracted. That way the interview can proceed with integrity quickly and be over. The family room is more warm. It's, uh, it's a place where families can come together. There are games. There's a TV. And then the conference room is where the multidisciplinary team, the prosecutor, the law enforcement person, child protective services worker, uh, and uh, the mental health worker observe the um, interview and can ask the interviewer questions. And for the forensic exam, the physical exam, is that done in the other offices? That is done in the, the other building here, the other main building. We have a, a complete exam room, which is where the telemedicine link is to uh, the University of Reno. And what happens is the family brings the child here to the center. The family stays here in the center with the child, and our two nurses walk the child across the courtyard to the exam room where the child is examined. In no case, whether it's the face-to-face -face interview or the medical inter, uh, examination, can the parents be actually present. That is not allowed. And as far as counselors, because that seems to be so important to what is going on, especially with the family and the child at that time, are they here on staff? Yes. Yes. They, we have myself and another mental health counselor licensed. We're both licensed. And we provide a great deal of one-on-one -on -one crisis intervention, counseling, and uh, then we have a team of advocates who do ongoing support services, sub support groups for women. And we're just about to launch a group for parents of children who have been sexually abused. Yeah. That's so important, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And that group will be open to everybody in the community. You don't have to have brought a child here to be examined. If something happened a year or two ago and you're still struggling with it, we encourage you to call us because you can become part of that group. How is this all funded? 
Um, a lot of it is funded uh, through um, private donations, which we continue to need um, desperately. Uh, and some of it is funded through the county. And this is just another step forward for no, no to abuse and what they're doing out to reach out to the community and help us heal in so many ways. It's the ultimate goal that I came uh, to uh, in, in my, when I was first here, we were dealing only with adults. We did nothing with children. And I was looking at all these children that came with the adults and they were just kind of shoved into the corner. Mm -hmm. And at that time I said, we have to do something with the children, even if it's only mental health services. And somehow, as a community, we were guided to uh, really bring it all together and provide this full array of services for the children. So now our focus is men, women, and children who have been abused and assaulted. What a great thing. How can people contact No to Abuse for donations for these kind of services? Uh, just call our hotline 24-7-751-1118. Once again, please call 751-1118. And if you feel that you can contribute in some way, it would be deeply appreciated. What a great facility. It is really, like it's it's really something we need. Very nice to have out here, finally. Yes, uh, yes. It's been a long time coming. Folks, we've got hot, we've got windy. It just doesn't seem to change for us. I'm not going to candy coat it for you. Next week looks pretty much the same. Don't go anywhere. We got your 70 forecast right after the break. Brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Hey everyone, welcome back to News 46. I'm Rick Vale with your weather. Sunny day today, a high of 102 degrees. Winds out of the south-southwest at about 8 miles per hour, but we are seeing gusts upwards of 26 miles per hour. Our pressure on the barometer holding steady 29.83. UV index for today, 10 very high, very much higher than we've had for quite a while. Sunrise is 529 a.m. and a record 114 degrees in good old 1977. Looking at tonight, it's going to be clear out there, low 76. Winds out of the south-southwest at about 11 miles per hour with gusts upwards of 26 miles per hour. Sunset will be at 8.05 p.m. and a record low 47 degrees back in 1996. Looking at tomorrow, sunny days out there, high of 103. A low of 78, winds out of the south-southwest, 18 miles per hour, very windy gusts up to 40 miles per hour. The UV index is 10, very high, and sunrise will be at 529 a.m. Looking at our seven-day forecast, Wednesday hump day going to look at 27 mile per hour gusts, high of 98, a low of 65. Thursday, 21 mile per hour gusts, high of 92, a low of 63. Friday heading into the weekend, 99 for the high with 66 for the overnight low and 21 mile per hour gusts are expected. Saturday is looking 23 mile per hour gusts with 103 for the daytime high, 71 for the overnight low. Sunday 105 degrees for the daytime high, 74 for the overnight low with gusty winds of about 20 miles per hour. Monday looking at partly cloudy skies, 22 mile per hour gusts, extremely hot, 108 degrees for the daytime high with 79 for the overnight low. And our worst weather in the nation today is young America for severe thunderstorms. Hot and windy. Hot and windy. Windy and hot. Windy and hot. I wouldn't bring you anything other than that. But <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> Tonight, a town hall meeting will be held at the Pahrump Nugget. The Healthcare Partners of Nevada is hosting this event, which begins at 6 p.m. to address patient questions regarding their health insurance options. And you and your family will be able to swim free this entire weekend during the Liberty Festival at the Pahrump Community Pool in Petrick Park. This is all courtesy of the Valley Cruisers of Pahrump. This event is funded by the Over the Hump to Pahrump Show and Shine Car Show, which is a non-profit event to help fund events such as these. We want to thank the Pahrump Valley Cruisers for their generosity and make sure to bring your swim trunks because it is definitely swim time. And folks, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Norma Jean Paddock. And from everyone up here on the Hill at KPVM, we wish you a safe evening. We'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Prov. <laughs>